CAUs for nursing assistants. Workplace safety topic includes body mechanics, falling procedures, preventing chemical injuries, fall prevention, fire safety, and workplace violence. Protecting your body. For balance, widen your stance or place one foot in front of the other. Ergonomics is the practice of designing equipment and work tasks to conform to the capacity of the worker. Manual lifting, turning, and repositioning of patients put healthcare workers at an increased risk for musculoskeletal disorders. These disorders include muscle strains and tears, ligament sprains, joint and tendon inflammation, pinched nerves, herniated discs in the spinal column. Always remember the proper technique of lifting involves using the muscles of the hips, thighs, and buttocks. Physical stress. Performing the same action over and over again places physical stress on the body. Lifting, pushing, pulling, stooping, bending, and moving. The ABCs of good body mechanics. The basic components of good body mechanics are alignment, balance, and coordinated movements. Alignment. Alignment is simply good posture. It ensures that there is no excess strain that's placed on the joints and muscles. The back is held in a neutral position with the natural curvature of the lower back intact. Here's an example of alignment. Balance. You can improve your balance by increasing your base of support by spreading your feet further apart, bringing the center of gravity, your torso, closer to the base of support, your feet, by bending at the knees and hips so that your torso is closer to your feet. Widening your stance or placing one foot in front of the other can help you balance. Coordinated body movement. Coordinated body movement involves using the weight of your body to help with movement. Once again, the coordinated body movement involves using your weight of your body to help with the movement. When moving a person up in bed, stand facing toward the bed with your feet apart. Step sideways to move the person's head and shoulders up. Transfer your weight from one foot to the other and the momentum helps you move the person. If you have to boost the person up in bed and you fail to raise the head of the bed, you'll likely injure your back because you're going to be standing in an awkward position. Body mechanics. Nursing students learn the importance of body mechanics which is the efficient movement and safe use of the body. Lifting and back safety. When you have to move a patient or resident from the bed to a chair, you bend your knees and hold the person close to the center of your body. You use the muscles in your thighs and hips to lift and move the person from the bed to the chair. Employing proper lifting techniques help to prevent back injuries. Back injuries are the most common work related injuries in the nursing industry. This is a diagram of lifting and using um, back safety. You're going to um, stand as close to the object as you can with a wide uh, base of support, bend at your knees, keep your back straight, tighten up your abdominal muscles and lift with your leg muscles. Question one. OSHA defines ergonomics as A, designing work tasks to conform to the capability of the worker, B, the ability of the worker to perform tasks using the correct equipment, C, the use of basic equipment to complete the task, D, none of the above. Which one defines ergonomics? A, designing work tasks to conform to the capability of the worker. OSHA defines ergonomics as the practice of designing equipment and work tasks to conform to the capability of the worker. This basically entails adjusting the work environment and how the workers perform their work-related practices so that injuries are prevented. Following procedures. Following procedures. There's a series of steps in a particular order to follow procedures. It protects the patients, residents, and nursing assistants. The steps may vary from state to state depending on where you received your training. 
Always follow policies of a facility and state where you work to ensure safe and consistent care. Pre-procedure actions. Promote efficiency, safety, courtesy, and respect. Getting ready for your steps include uh, washing your hands, uh, gathering your equipment, uh, announcing yourself, knock at the door and identify self when entering into a patient room, verify the identity of the person, explain the procedure, describe what will happen, respect the person's privacy, provide adequate privacy, and follow safety precautions. After you perform the procedure action, promote comfort and safety as well as communication. Finish up steps. Uh, alignment. Con confirm the person is well aligned in bed if that's where you leave them and they are comfortable. Leave the light control, telephone, and fresh water in place. Um, safety. See to safety at all times. Open up the curtain and door when necessary, wash your hands and provide good hygiene. Document and report and record. Warn your patients to take precautions when using oxygen. For instance, do not use petroleum-based products on your patient's lips, facial, or chest area. Keep wool blankets away from patients using oxygen as they are combustible. And oxygen in use sign should be placed in a patient's room when using oxygen. Preventing falls. Risk of falling. Many factors increase a nursing assistant's risk of falling. Multiple duties during the shift. Responding to emergency situations. Walking on unnoticed wet floors. When a nursing assistant helps a very weak, unsteady, or uncooperative person to walk or transfer from one place to another without help, and attempting to prevent a patient or a resident from falling. Avoiding injuries. When a nursing assistant fails to ask a coworker for help when assisting a patient to walk, increases the risk for the nursing assistant to fall. Assisting with a fall. Protect yourself and your resident or patient. If your patient complains of dizziness or seems unsteady, help the person to sit on the floor and stay with the person while calling for help. If a fall cannot be avoided, place your body behind the person and place your arms around his body. Do not grab his arm in attempt to prevent the fall because it may cause a more severe injury. Assisting with a fall. Pull the person's body close to you and widen your base of support by placing one foot behind the other and allow the person to slide down your body to the floor. Assisting with a fall. As a person slides down, squat while still supporting his body and gently lower him to the floor. Lower yourself to the floor and assume a sitting position with the person's head in your lap. Assisting with a fall, stay with the person and call for assistance. Assisting a person from the bed to a chair. When lifting the patient from the bed to a chair, bend at the knees and hold the patient close to the center of your body. Obra recommends the use of mechanical lifts to replace manual lifting. Preventing chemical injuries. Safety Data Sheet, SDS, formerly called MSDS, a manual that contains information, for instance, used for chemical spills, how they occur, and how they are cleaned up. It also uh, summarizes key information, for instance, what the chemical is made from, which exposures may be dangerous, what to do if an exposure occurs, and how to clean up spills. As a nursing assistant, be familiar with what chemicals you may come in contact with your facility. Know the proper and safe way to handle each chemical in use. The manual is located in either the nurse's station or another centralized area. Preventing electrical shocks. Causes of electrical mishaps. Electrical mishaps can occur due to frayed wires, loose plugs, and unsafe electrical appliances. Precautions need to be taken to help protect all patients and residents from electrical fires and shocks. 
For instance, if a resident brings a lamp into a facility and the cord does not look safe, explain to the patient that the lamp will need to be looked at by the appropriate department prior to its usage. Preventative measures. Use grounded appliances and power strips. Some equipment cannot be plugged into power strips. Know which ones. Use three pronged plugs, safety outlets with ground fault breakers. Never use extension cords and do not operate electrical items around showers and bathtubs. Question two, if you notice an electrical device with a frayed cord, you should know where the device is located and report it to maintenance. True or false? False, the device should be unplugged and removed from the service immediately then tagged and reported to maintenance. Fire safety. Preventing fire. For a fire to occur, three elements must be present. Fuel, heat, and oxygen. Common sources of fuel and oxygen. Common sources of fuel in healthcare settings are cloth, such as bed linens, mattresses, and clothing, cooking oil, gasoline, and nail polish remover. The building itself is also a common source of fuel and oxygen. Common sources of fuel and oxygen. Heat can be provided by electrical sparks, such as by a frayed electrical cord, which is a short and a piece of electrical equipment, or even lightning strike. Other sources, lighted smoking materials, cigars, cigarettes, lighted candles, heating elements such as radiators or furnaces, and stoves. Common sources of fuel and oxygen is oxygen present in the air. Patients and residents receive oxygen therapy, which increases the content of oxygen in the air in the immediate area. Patients should not use wool blankets when receiving oxygen. RACE, RACE, Fire Response Plan. The general actions that are taken in the event of a fire emergency as known as RACE, Fire Response Plan. R indicates remove any patients or residents who are in the immediate area of danger to safety. A, activate the alarm. C, contain the fire by closing the doors and windows. E, extinguish the fire if possible, or if the fire is large and spreading quickly, evacuate the building. Race fire response. Types of fires. Fires are classified as A type, B, and C type. This classification determines the best way to put the fires out. Type A fire is fueled by wood, paper, cloth, dried leaves, grass, etc. It's extinguished by spraying water and removing the heat. Type B fire is fueled by petroleum products, cooking oil, grease. It's extinguished by sprinkling baking powder or putting a lid on a pan and remove it from the heat. Do not try to put this type of fire out with water. C type fire is fueled by electrical short circuit, electric sparks extinguished by using a fire extinguisher. Do not try to put this fire out with water. It can result in shock and electrocution. Avoid, things to avoid. Overloaded outlets and extension cords. Also avoid using electrical equipment around water. When using a fire extinguisher, remember the word PASS, P-A-S-S. -S. P, pull the safety pin out. A, aim the hose toward the base of the fire. S, squeeze the handle. And S, spray the contents of the fire extinguisher at the base of the fire using a sweeping motion. Question three, sometimes fires can happen no matter how careful we are. What is the first step if a fire occurs in your facility? A, call 911. B, 
Close all designated fire doors. C, evacuate the building. And D, relocate all persons in the immediate area. Answer, relocate persons in the immediate area. When a fire occurs, remember racer, remove all individuals in the immediate area, activate the alarm, contain the fire by closing doors and windows, and extinguish or evacuate depending on the situation. Disaster preparedness. Disaster preparedness. A disaster is a sudden unexpected event that causes injury to many people, major damage to property or both. Disasters can be caused by acts of nature or they may be as a result of explosions, accidents, or acts of war or terrorism. Your facility or agency will have a disaster preparedness plan that will direct the actions of the healthcare team in the event of such occurrence. You should know the particular duties that will be required of you in the event of a disaster and will remain calm. Workplace violence. Workplace violence. Is defined as violent acts, including physical assaults and threats of assaults directed toward persons at work or on duty. It includes acts of terrorism. Each facility should provide employee training to know how to handle this type of situation. Ask to read your facility's policy if you have any doubt about what you're supposed to do. Workplace violence. Patients and families are generally experiencing increased stressors that may bring about aggressive behavior directed toward the healthcare worker. Patients may be experiencing physical and emotional disorders that have added to their aggressive behavior. Question four, healthcare workers are more likely to be injured on the job as a result of poor body mechanics. True or false? Answer false. Workplace violence is increasing as a risk to our health care workers. Nurses, nursing assistants, orderlies, and attendants are likely to be injured as a result of a workplace violence. The end.